At first glance, supernovas would seem to be very straightforward affairs. Giant, short-lived stars go out in a blaze of glory and explode on a titanic scale, leaving behind a bunch of dust and gas and some type of supernova remnant. But in reality, supernovas can be very situational, fall in several different classes, and in the case of one recent supernova, it's outright mystifying as to just how it could do what it appeared to have. The supernova in question is known as IPTF14HLS. In November of 2014, a survey at the Mount Palomar Observatory detected this object. In January of 2015, it was confirmed to be a supernova, and initially suspected to be a completely normal one that would dim across the next three months. It didn't. It continued to sputter in some kind of sustained explosion for over a thousand days, and searches and past sky surveys showed that this star had previously flared up in this way in 1954 and later. As the thousand day flare up progressed, the supernova varied in brightness by as much as 50%. And instead of cooling down as would be expected after normal supernova types, it maintained a constant temperature of as much as 6,000 degrees Kelvin. So how does an exploding star keep exploding repeatedly like this? That's an unresolved question, and while a number of explanations are on the table, none of them quite fit. Now this object is not located in the Milky Way, rather it's in another galaxy entirely. This galaxy is a dwarf galaxy with a lot of star formation still going on, and galaxies like that tend to have low metallicity overall, which may factor into an explanation for the object. As an aside, this is how most supernovas are studied, intergalactically, because in and of themselves, supernovas in the Milky Way are moderately rare, but when you have millions of galaxies in which to look for them, they become common overall. The star that sparked all of this off is thought to have been very massive, more than 50 times more so than the sun. That much mass getting blown off in a supernova produces an expanding debris cloud that eventually will form a nebula, much like the famous Crab Nebula, which is the result of a supernova that was observed in 1054 AD and recorded by Chinese astronomers. In the case of this supernova, however, that adds another layer to the mystery. The supernova is producing a debris disk, but the expansion of it is six times slower than a normal supernova. It's as if the explosion and the expansion of the subsequent disk are playing out in slow motion. The star has since quieted down and is forming a remnant nebula, as though the explosion is finally over. But given that this star was exploding over 50 years ago only to explode again, it's anyone's guess if it will flare up again. So what exactly is going on here? Well, there are a number of hypotheses, but none are quite consistent with what was observed. Normally a supernova of this type would consume much of its hydrogen in the blast, and what would be left over would be a neutron star or a black hole. That process, however, is inconsistent with the observations of IPTF-14 HLS. Plus, there is still a lot of hydrogen observable, which is also inconsistent. One possibility is that of a pulsational pair instability supernova. What happens there is a massive star loses mass until it begins to violently pulse, causing it to shed pulses of material that then collide with the previous pulse material and produce flashes mimicking repeated explosions. The problem with this one is that IPTF-14 HLS produced significantly more energy than what is predicted for this type of event. Other options include fallback accretion, where the material falls back towards a star. Or a neutron star companion is interfering with the star by accreting material from it and then expelling it as jets. Another is the effects of extreme stellar wind. None quite fit, however, but there is one explanation on the table that is outright exotic, and if it's the case, it's amongst the most violent events possible in the universe. The idea is that very massive stars can get so hot in the depths of their cores that energy gets converted into matter and antimatter, which then annihilates, throwing the star into extreme instability. The outer layers of the star would get blown off, forming the debris disk, but the star's core would remain intact and the creation of more antimatter would continue causing the sputtering effect until finally the star explodes completely and collapses in on itself to become a black hole. 
Ultimately, whatever happened at IPTF-14 HLS remains an unknown. But there is another supernova that behaves somewhat similarly, I stress somewhat, that we know a bit more about. It's the Eta Carina star system and lies at a very distant 7500 light years from Earth. This appeared to be a normal night sky star shining at fourth magnitude until it abruptly brightened in 1837 to briefly become one of the brightest stars in the night sky. It then calmed down to below naked eye visibility only to flare up and brighten again in 1892. Since 1940, it has consistently brightened and is now back up to magnitude 4.5. This has been termed a supernova imposter, in that what initially appears to be a supernova actually isn't, and the subject star remains intact afterwards. The Eta Carina system is itself rather bizarre in its own right. There are at least two stars in the system. The second component is thought to probably be a normal blue supergiant, but the main star is a peculiar star and the source of the outbursts. This star is crazy. It is known as a luminous blue variable. These stars are highly unpredictable in their brightness, but they've also been known to change their spectra. It's also doing something rather shocking. This star is emitting an ultraviolet laser beam, and it's the only known star currently doing that. Normally, you'd connect laser light with technology, but not in this case. This appears to be a natural ultraviolet laser being created by the presence of a gas cloud. The whole system is enveloped in a supernova remnant known as the Homunculus Nebula, and the conditions for creating such a coherent signal must be very rare, which is why we don't see natural lasers all over. But not uniquely, a star acting as an infrared laser is also known. I think I'd have used a stronger term than peculiar for this one, and if it's not enough that a giant weird star is blasting a laser beam at us from inside something called the Homunculus Nebula, it's also about to finally explode. The main star in Eta Carina is expected to go supernova itself in the astronomical near future. It's another one of those Betelgeuse type stars that could explode tomorrow or not for another 100,000 years or more. But why it's shedding material and brightening erratically isn't entirely clear then when it does finally explode, it won't pose a threat to Earth. But it could become so bright as to be visible at daylight and rival Venus in brightness. What's also interesting is in that these types of bizarre stars sort of stand out in the galaxy. If there are other civilizations in the galaxy studying astronomy, they'd know of these same stars as well and actively study them. The idea that our astronomers are looking at the same stars alien astronomers are looking at seems a little bit spooky, but there is actually a SETI angle in all of this. One of the problems within SETI is that to see a transient radio signal from an alien civilization, you need to know where to look in more ways than just one. First, you have to be looking at the right spot in the sky, but you also need to have the right frequency on the dial. And finally, you need to know when to look. It's very possible that radio signals from alien civilizations happen frequently, and because of those factors, we have simply missed it. But very peculiar stars like Eta Carina provide a kind of signpost. When it goes supernova, the whole galaxy will be looking at the same point in the galaxy. That solves the time and the place problems. That has led to thinking that the best time to look for alien contact signals is during noteworthy astronomical events that can be predicted, such as supernovae, if those can ever indeed be predicted with precision. While everyone's looking at it, in comes a coincident radio signal announcing the presence of an alien civilization. To do it, you wouldn't need this to be in the Eta Carina system during the supernova, merely near enough to send your signal, or if it's directed to Earth, do it from behind or in front of the supernova in the line of sight. As to the dial problem, that's an open question, but there are signpost frequencies, such as the 1420 MHz hydrogen line and our modern receivers can monitor millions of channels at once, so there is a chance that if our SETI experiments are turned on the next galactic supernova, they might pick up any signals from alien civilizations sent piggybacking on the event. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently musing about the past. Imagine if you could go back in time. Young JMG, start a YouTube channel sooner. It's 1998, YouTube doesn't exist yet.
And stop calling me. You're violating causality. Godzilla's on cable. Gotta go. Well, he was disagreeable. Anyway, be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.